minutes. Let's move to approve. Is there a second? A second. It is seconded. Any questions, comments? Okay, all those in favor, let's try raising a hand. See if we can do that and be quick. Oh, I see three. John, you want to raise your hand? George, you want to raise your hand? I don't, my, my picture's frozen. I guess I better go back to, uh, to uh, words. Oh, um, you're okay. Bob, oh. how do you vote? Aye. Uh, aye. George, how do you vote? My screen's frozen. Chris? Chris, you're on mute. Aye. Gina? Yes. Gina, how do you vote? Yes. John? Aye. Uh, John, I, I'm yes. Okay, I think we got enough. We got Bill okay. Gosselin just Next joined one. in. I am here. It is the 1015, 1015 person. I we'll see Joe, I see Joe Granada, I see Bill. Good, welcome. Thank you, sir. Okay. We're on the we're on the 1015. Okay, is there a second? I second it. Somebody second, second it. Second it. Oh good. Is there any question? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Write down the list. Bob? Um, aye. George? Aye. Chris? Aye. Gina? Aye. John? Aye. Bill? Aye. I think we got everybody, and I go, I go to aye. Taken care of. The next one is the 1020 personnel committee meeting. Move the acceptance of the minutes. Second. Entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Seconded. Any questions, comments? All those in favor? Let's go down the list. Bob? Aye. I'm not hearing anything from Bob. All right, George? Bob says aye. Aye. <laughs> George, you say aye? Aye. Okay, Chris? Aye. Gina? Aye. John? Aye. John, how do you vote? Aye. Bill? Aye. And I say aye. It's approved. And the last one, no, not the last one. The board meeting of 1029. I make a motion to be approved. Bob. Motion to approve. Thank you. A second? Second. second. Chris seconds it. Any comments, questions, changes? Hearing none, let's go down the list. Bob, how do you vote? Bob uh, votes aye. Aye. Right. George? Aye. Chris? Aye. Gina? Aye. John? Aye. Chris? Aye. Me, Bill. Aye. Bill. Aye. Okay. No. And I vote aye. Passed. And the last one is the 11 5 personnel committee meeting. Move the acceptance of the minutes. Second. Questions, comments? All those in favor will go down the list. Bob, you know what you can do? You can either say aye or raise your hand. Either way that I can see you. I got aye. it. Aye. George, I see Chris, I see Gina, I see John. I see uh, Bill, and I say aye. That's approved. Executive Director's Report. 
Uh, Ellen, before we move into that, uh, suggest since we have Sandy Mac available that we move up uh, item number six, the resolution for a new bond rate lock. Okay. Anyone have any objection to that? Hearing none, we do it. Okay. Number six. That's why Sandy's here. <laughs> As I mentioned in my report, we had a um, large payment due on a bond the, in September of 21, and we looked into perhaps refinancing that sooner rather than later, considering the low interest rates. So we contacted Sandy and Maureen Grahegian and Adam Crea, our financial advisors, and asked them to look into this. And they've been working with uh, TD Bank as to what our options were. So I think, uh, Sandy, if you wanna describe where we're at. Okay. Um, so in 2014, you issued um, a bond that was purchased by TD Bank. The rate at that time was fixed at 2.390%. Um, there is a bullet so-called that is due on November 1st, 2021 of 6 million $510,000. We always anticipated that we would refinance this and the timing is actually quite good because the interest rates are low. Um, so we have been going back and forth with uh, both Pam and Mark in terms of how much, how far out you wanna go and how that would factor into your um, other bond financings a couple of years from now. Um, and so we asked them for a five-year rate, a seven-year rate, and a 10-year rate. They came back and, and I don't have to tell you all, you know that the rates right now are very volatile. So these were just indicative rates when we asked, but the 10-year um, the rate was at 1.5. The seven-year rate was 1.3 and the five-year rate was right about 1%. Um, and so Pam really liked the 1% for five years, um, but that's the concern that we have is that if we try to do a closing now, um, we have a prepayment penalty that's due because you locked into a rate with the earlier bonds. And so we're, we're trying to weigh is whether or not we should pull the trigger now and just pay the prepayment because there'll be savings on a 1% versus a 2.38% or the best of all worlds is just to lock in a rate now and then they'll let us keep this rate for one year. So we can decide when it is that we want to refinance this bond. Um, so before you tonight, is only really the approval to do one thing, and that is to enter into a rate lock agreement with TD. Um, and I wanna pause for a minute because TD can't enter into a rate lock agreement with you until they do a full underwriting of refinancing this bond um, uh, upon the same terms and conditions as the earlier bond. So the reason why we, we needed approval tonight is they wanted to make sure that A, we were gonna go with TD and B, when they do their full underwriting, that, that um, they will agree to hold the lock for 1%, the rate for 1% for one, I'm sorry, that they will hold the rate for one year for a rate deposit of 3%. So that's what's before you today. What is not before you today is whether it's a five year or a seven year or a 10 year, we were just providing that information to you so you have some idea of the savings that'll happen as a result of this. So I'm gonna pause here for a minute and ask if there's any questions and then we can go through the actual resolution. Yeah, you know, Sandy, um, Gina, I have a question, which is, does the prepayment penalty on our existing bond go away at some point or does that stay in place until it matures? It declines, so the cl which is a great question, which is why we're balancing all of this. So the rate goes, the closer we get to 9-1-21, it goes down to zero. So 
um, if we wanted, to, but we can hold on to the rate today. So we actually would pay no prepayment premium if we just waited and paid off the bonds on September 1st. Okay. Sandy, you mentioned something about uh, 3%. I, I didn't follow. Yeah, so there's something called a rate deposit. And it's the same thing that happened the last time you did this. It's, it's calculated based on the par amount of the bonds and it's 3%. What happens is when you sign the rate lock agreement, um, you would write a check for that 3% and that would then be applied um, at closing. So it's not like you're paying that on top of the payment. It just gets applied toward the, the redemption price of the earlier bond. Thank you. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, Tom. Lost my internet at four o'clock. Ran over to the church, which is where I'm working now. Oh, okay. boy. Get set up and then get let in. Glad to see you. Okay, I guess Milan's the only one not with us. Anyway, are we ready to... Uh, any other questions? Uh, Sandy, do you want to uh, run us through the... Uh, specific I, I have a, a question. Is sure. It, where do we stand relative to the... Do we have to go through another bond later for the uh, phase two pipeline or can that be included in this at such a low rate? I would love to say yes, but um, no. <laughs> um, so a couple of things about the, so the answer is no, this is only refinancing with respect to the earlier, um, the earlier bond for TD. When you are closer to knowing how much you need for the phase two, and we've been talking a lot about this, Mike, with um, Pam and Mark, because what we're trying to do is smooth out your debt service and one of the reasons why Pam is looking at a five year, not just the 1% interest rate, but because that debt service will be done. And then you can actually take on more debt um, under your, the, the, the covenants in your indenture for the large project. Um, so the answer is no. The second um, reason why we probably wouldn't recommend including it now is we don't know who's gonna finance the, that uh, particular project. Depending upon how large it is, it may be in your interest to go through um, the Rhode Island Infrastructure Bank because they have a subsidized program. Um, and even with their commitment fee, the subsidized program is significantly lower interest rate than what you would be seeing here. So, um, so for those, both those reasons, we haven't included the phase two in this financing. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Any other comments, questions? Okay, so Sandy, you're gonna lead us into that resolution you want? So the first recital uh, basically sets forth what we anticipate to be your new financing at 6.9 million. We always say up to 6.9 million because we don't know until we get closer what that's going to be. It'll more likely than not be less. Um, we talk about them that we're going to be doing these bonds, issuing these bonds in September of 2021 or earlier. So it will never be later than September, but it could be earlier. Um, we're going to issue the bonds pursuant to um, uh, a series resolution. And when we have the exact amount, we will bring that before you for a final vote. We uh, reference in the recitals that the earlier bonds could be paid um, earlier than September 1st. So if we wanted to pay them earlier, we could do it subject to that prepayment penalty. That prepayment penalty decreases the closer we get to that September 2021, and it is eliminated, obviously, um, on the 9 -1 -1. Um Based on all that information and running different right. models, the financial advisors have determined that refunding um, the prior to the maturity date would make sense and it would be a financial benefit to the authority. And that coincides with uh, the executive director's desire to have this done before your fiscal year end, um, so in February, 
um, so that when the new management came in, this would be one project, if you will, that would, was well underway. Um, so with that background set forth in the recitals, um, and also the fact that the TD has provided indicative rates at five years and seven years, um, and we have uh, checked those rates against the FHLB rates, and they're consistent with what's in the market as of today. And that's important because that will all be embodied in the rate lock agreement. So what you would be voting on today is in the resolution section one, that you are authorizing the authority at some point in the future to issue 6,900,000 general revenue refunding bonds, that prior to the issuance of those bonds, that your team is authorized to negotiate, execute and deliver an interest rate agreement um, and to pay the rate hold deposit. Again, that rate hold deposit is equal to 3% of the par of the bonds. Um, you approve the payment of the rate hold deposit. You approve the setting of the interest rate, which will happen when you enter into the rate hold deposit and understand that that will be held for one year. And uh, given the, the, the transition that's happening, um, I have embodied in this resolution something different, that there's two offices, not one, any two offices are um, required to execute and deliver documents. And the reason for that is PAM's um, transition, maybe a new person coming in. So we wanted to make sure that we, that if for some reason uh, PAM wasn't available, that there would be two board offices that could also fulfill the role of the authority. So it's a transition. And I point that out because it's different than what I've done for you in the past. You have this. I, I'm assuming you were reading from, from a prepared resolution. I thought that that resolution was sent to you all for prior to this agreement, to, prior to this meeting. It was? Yeah, we have it. Okay. Okay. I'd like to propose that we accept the resolution as uh, forwarded to us. Second. 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 Further, further discussion? Hearing none, let's go down the list here. Bob, how do you Bob. vote? Aye. John? Aye. Gina? Yes. George? Aye. Chris? Aye. Bill? Aye. Tom? Yes. And I vote yes. Excellent. Thank you very much. It'll be about two weeks. I will uh, communicate to TD that you voted this today. It takes them two weeks to do underwriting. Mark, they may ask you for some financial information as part of the underwriting. And as soon as that comes to be, we will uh, watch closely and we'll pick the date to enter the rate lock agreement <laughs> when, uh, <laughs> when it gets that 1% or lower. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Sandy. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Happy Thanksgiving. Yes, happy Thanksgiving. Bye, Sandy. Okay, we're back to number four, executive director's report. I don't really have uh, anything to add. We've been, uh, although um, as far as the leak on the pipeline, it has been found as of today. Um, Mike can give a bit of an update on that. It's going to be Unfortunately, a little bit on the expensive side to repair, um, but not our absolute worst case scenario. I've got a couple of pictures. Mike, if you want to. Uh... Uh, sure. Um, so it, what we're looking at here is um, something that uh, always uh, concerned us. Uh, so this is where our steel pipeline um, on the left was, this was the original pipe that was drilled under the river. Um, and this is where it transitions to um, a ductile, the black pipe. Um, that, that is our standard type of water pipe that's throughout the system. Um, so at some point on both sides of the river, um, it, the material had to transition. Um, it transitions by way of this flange by flange. Um, these are two flat pieces of steel 
that are essentially bolted up to each other. Um, normal pipe joints, there's a little bit of an overlap. Um, this is atypical for underground um, because there is a, uh, a potential for corrosion. Um, these are very typical for above ground piping uh, installations. It's, it's pretty much um, the standard for that. So pump stations, vaults, anything where the piping is exposed and not direct buried. Um, so um, smart ball um, was worth it. It, it found it, um, found it with, with pretty good precision, um, put us in. We, we dug into the, into the data uh, with them. There's some background data that they don't necessarily publish. Um, and it could, it could identify the difference in materials um, based on some uh, metallic signatures that the ball could pick up. So we knew it was around here. We knew this was susceptible um, to failure. We didn't think we were going to see this type of failure. Um, so we thought we would see all these nuts. Um, we thought we'd start to see them rounding. We'd see the epoxy bubbling. Um, and we have all these on hand, all new studs and hardware. We, we could have rebuilt it. But instead, um, uh, right around the mouse there, you see a line. That is actually the cra a crack. Um, so that is on the ductile flange. It's cracked. It's cracked. Um, that it, it's a susceptible point to cracking because it, it's right next to the, um, hole the bolt goes through. Um, and that's it close up. Um, so we can start to see some corrosion there around the black. Um, and that's something that we can't, um, fix, um, in the field under pressure. Um, ah, so I can see the water coming in. Yep. Yeah. Um, so what's a little disheartening here is that the fact that we're not seeing the, uh, at the backside of the nut here, we're not seeing the, the stud um, penetrate the, um, uh, the nut. Um, so normally we like to see um, the, the bolt fully captured in the nut. Um, and, and that's uh, required to achieve the strength, pro the restraining properties of the nut. Um, and we don't know, was it over um, tightened to try to achieve that full capture? And that's a function, was, the, was, the, uh, was it dropped uh, upon installation? We don't know how that crack got there. We just know it's there now. Um, so looking ahead, um, what was on our radar and we've already reached out to manufacturers was a type of uh, uh, encapsulation where we keep this pipe live, um, and uh, we, we put a, a split type clamp in, and we basically make a sandwich out of that, um, out of that failure. Um, it, it's something that we use on a, on a smaller scale. Um, I included some pictures um, actually um, in, in one of uh, the pages of my report where we are actually installing that um, sandwich type coupling um, on a, uh, a distribution pipe at, at 12 inches or smaller. Um, so the problem with this one it has to be made. Um, the other issue is it, it's, it's non-standard. So normally piping is size by size. So say you have 12 inches on one side, you have the same diameter on another. So in our situation, we have 32 inches on one side and 30 inches on the other. So um, it, it's, it's custom. Uh, so with custom comes cost. Uh, so um, where We've already reached out to them. We've given drawings to um, the manufacturer. We're waiting back on, on lead times um, and, and we'll evaluate um, uh, the, the cost benefits of overtime as we are um, up against the holidays. Um, otherwise, uh, the leak is stable. It's concentrated to that one. Um, yeah, as you can see from the picture, there's significant hardware um, associated um, with that uh, joint. So there, there's about 30 bolts. Um, going around that flange. So um, we, uh, we stabilize the excavation. Uh, we don't see it as an issue, um, letting it leak. Um, it's something that's done routinely um, while uh, procure, we can procure the necessary materials. Um, we're also evaluating with the contractor um, the costs associated, associated with cutting out the material just so we can weigh all of our options. Um, cutting out the material with conventional materials um, you know, has its benefits. The parts are more readily available, but again, given the two different diameters, there is still a little bit of that custom flavor, um, to, to both types of repairs. So, um,
but we're moving on it. We're uh, luckily the manufacturer is out of Texas. So um, I'm still communicating um, as of right now. Um, I should have a drawing soon um, and they're working on, on uh, what they need to do to uh, get it going. So hopefully I'll have pricing by tomorrow and we're gonna keep this uh, process moving along. Thank you. And just want to mention there is some good news of the fact that this is just an isolated instance where we've got an actually cracked pipe. So in the case of we were worried that if we ran into corrosion issues, there could be uh, problems with other connections in the system as well. But it looks like the bolts themselves were in good condition. They had a poly coating on them and uh, looks like rust was minimal except for the actual crack in the pipe. So Mike, this new on the one hand, just, it's good news. <laughs> this new clamp just goes right over the... Uh, yep, so, so we'll... Nothing that's there now? Yeah, so on one side, it'll be um, uh, manufactured to one diameter. On the other side, it'll be manufactured to the other diameter. And um, we have to make sure we have enough throw um, of the clamp to get over the flange joint and that in the um, center section we'll have to have an expansive diameter um, to get over that flange because the flange is, is considerable in nature compared to the 32. And the water from the leak just stays inside the clamp. Yeah, yeah. We disinfect everything, everything's cleaned. Um, and uh, yeah, we just trap it in there. The clamps will come with a little vent. So as we uh, encapsulate it, you know, pressure will build up. Um, so we, if, if you trap that pressure in there, you can blow out the gaskets and stuff like that. So, um, they, we put a little ball valve on them. You let the air off and, and then we plug it when we're done. And uh, hopefully it lasts for a hundred years. Mike, with that scenario, I assume the pipeline stays in service during the repair? Uh, we try to maintain uh, pressurization as much as possible. If um, you have so, to cut something out, do you have to turn it off at that point? At that point, we would have to transition. So we were, we um did coordinate with both the health department and the city of east providence um in advance of this just in case um we always want to be um prepared um so we were prepared to move um to an alternate supply through east providence uh if we did um have an issue um anytime you excavate um there is a, a risk of just breaking something just from the excavation process um um, the other potential was we were going to encounter something significantly corroded and um, by removing the soil, we removed some uh, the stability of the area and, and we, we risked the, um, uh, the integrity of, of the pipeline. So um, we have to make sure there's guys in there. We got to make sure everything's safe. Um, at the time they were digging that, we had 3 million gallons um, flowing through the pipeline. So there was always constant flow. Uh, so if anything ever gets compromised, that's a lot of water. Um, that's about 2,100 gallons per minute, um, you know, in a small hole. So um, we always got to keep an eye on safety as well. Thank you. No, another question. Is there any reason to believe another that- Another question. Might, is, I've, got a, I've got a question. Is there any reason to think that there might be other cracks? Is this some um, shortfall in the type of metal or is there any way to tell that? The great news, this is a very small crack. Um, and this is a very, very small leak. So, so small, you could stand in the hole with it and, and not have any safety concerns. So the fact that Smartball was able to find that um, in a seven mile inspection and not hear any other noise uh, was a very good sign. Um, so we dug two test pits ahead of time and the soil was very dry. So we were actually um, concerned that we may not actually even um, find anything, but we did. So the, the technology that found this um, has proved itself. Um, and with that, it has also proved out that our, our system uh, on the transmission side is pretty tight. So, so that is um, comforting. As far as anomalies um, throughout um, the rest of the system, yeah, the, the, these, these types of things at a small scale um, are a definite concern from a leak detection standpoint. Um, because uh, like we've said, the, um, the big ones we can find, it's the... Oh, Mike, we lost you. We can see you, Mike, but we can't hear you. <laughs> yeah. 
Mike, we lost your sound. Am I back? Hey. 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 I'm sorry about that. Um, technology hey, today. Um, so yeah, so um, I don't know when I dropped out, but the good news is uh, the transmission main um, was surveyed um, and it appears to be tight um, given that um, this very small leak was the one that was quantified. Um, and whether or not this is pervasive, um, uh, you know, there, there is that likelihood, but um, uh, it, it, it's uh, something that uh, you know we look for all the time and we're cognizant of it, which is why we try to do these leak detections because finding these small leaks um, is really what you want to hone in on it because um, these are the ones that um, you, you don't find. They don't rear its head. They're not the big ones. They're not the ones out on Hope Street uh, like today where water's actually surfacing and we can chase it down. Um, so it's these sleeping ones that you could have a hundred of them. Um, and the, it, those uh, cumulatively um, add up. Sorry about the technology. <laughs> but specifically with the type of crack in the pipe, it is unusual. We Anybody got expected, a question? We would have expected more that the bolts may have corroded. So it was somewhat of a relief that we found the type of uh, leak that we did. All right. What is the estimate on the, on the time to create the appropriate uh, clamshell and have that installation completed? Without accelerating manufacturing, their standard lead time for a component like that is about three weeks. Okay. Well, okay. we're actually looking for the right. end of the month in this case. We don't want to leave the hole open any longer than we have okay, to. Okay, so we're trying to move faster. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, are we back to you? Uh, we completed with this section. We're going to go back to your report, Pam. Um, I didn't have much to add to the report unless anyone had any questions. Pam, I had a question. This is on the item with respect to demolition of the water treatment. I have a question. And there's a sentence saying that uh, operations are looking into additional trailers to store equipment. Is that a long-term plan for storing or could you explain that a little bit? Uh, yes, we do store meters and some equipment that needs to be in, uh, in a warm room environment. Right. So what we would do is uh, look into the possibility of uh, having, we have a couple of trailers in the yard now which we use for storage. Uh, when and if we um, remove the treatment plant, which we're looking to do possibly um, starting next year, we would need some place for storage. We're also looking at evaluating our existing garage and uh, looking for more space as well. So we're uh, gonna be evaluating that in the coming year as well. We've talked with the town about the possibility of trading some property. Um, and I think we mentioned before, behind us is a playground, ball field. The town was possibly considering that for a fire station. And we were looking at the possibility of uh, building a new garage and storage in that area with demoing the area where the existing treatment plant and uh, garage are built now. And perhaps trading that with the town. It would make an excellent uh, playground area as well as boat ramp site and for future, um, once the, especially once the dams are removed, a future uh, town park area. Uh, but a lot depends on what they intend to do for a fire station. So they started out with some very large plans and they've come down to some smaller plans, but they haven't been able to move forward. Obviously funding is an issue with that too. So we're, we're trying to look at our options as to what we could do going forward. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. I have a question on the, uh, uh, the changes that Joe is, the one that Joe is uh, changing 
on the uh, BCWA Act. Uh, what's the status on that, Joe? Have you completed that? Yeah, I tried. Now that the election is done. <laughs> So I, I, I drafted the letter, I sent it to Pam for her to revise and make sure I had it right. She sent it back today, so I should have it finished tomorrow. So we're close. We should have it done ah, by- uh, Okay, so we may see this at, at tomorrow. Okay. Pam, I have a question regarding the dams and the removal. Well, what? I guess what I'm saying is I think it's never too early. Nope, we'll be ready to send it out. Jealous yeah, right. afraid uh, you're cutting in and out quite a bit. Oh. Pam? Yes, Bob? Uh, a question regarding the removal of the dams. Uh, I know you've kept us up to speed relative to the bottom line cost and we have some split cost relative to different agencies giving us funds for that. Can you put that into a spreadsheet and show how much BCWA is going to put in for each dam removal and how much we're going to get from, I, I think it was DEM or EPA or something like that. So we could get to the bottom line and say, this is how much we're going to put in and this is what we expect to get from other agencies. Uh, we are still pursuing, which we won't be able to do till next year, funding from uh, one of the national agencies. They've been very interested in helping us with the dam removals. We just couldn't meet their timelines. We had to wait a little longer before we applied. So we do have 1.2 million towards the approved, towards the removal from the Rhode Island DEM. And then we are looking for some additional funding. Um, Sure, we can outline the total costs and how much uh, more we would like to get from the uh, national agency. Uh, that'd be great. That's what I'm looking for because it's easier to explain to say, you know, we're not funding the entire thing. Here's what we're getting from various agencies to assist in the removal of the dams. Right, understand. Any other questions? Comments. Okay, let's let's move forward. I guess we're going with uh, Mark. Financial report. Okay. Uh, Mark, can you hear me? I, you're cutting in and out, but I I got you. I'll start. Everybody hear me all right? Just wave if you hear me okay. There we go. Mark, can you hear me? I, I can. Alan, you, you, I know your picture's frozen. The sound is not coming through at all. Okay, I think I think it's in your end, Alan, because your, your face was frozen there for a while. Okay. Okay, you got me now? I can hear you talking now. Okay, great. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, First point, I'd, li I'd like to add a little bit of uh, history onto what Sandy Mack was uh, ab about the, the refunding on that loan. Back when we took that loan, uh, this will give you a, a little clearer what, what, why we were doing this. Uh, back in 2014, we took out an $8.55 million bond with TD Bank. And at the time, the rate we got for 20 years was up there. Uh, a lot higher than the 2.4 that we went with. And at the time we were still paying the two large bonds for the, uh, the purchase of the authority and the, um, the pipeline, the East Bay pipeline. So we decided at that time, uh, they offered us a much lower rate to go with a, a, a seven year uh, with the balloon payment uh, with 20 year immunization. So that worked out fine and has proved that was a good decision on our part to do at that time. So that, keep that kept our debt service low in 2014, 15, 16, and then we paid off the big bonds. So that timing worked out very well. So um, right now we're reviewing, um, I think when I meet with the financial 
committee, hopefully uh, sometime after Thanksgiving, uh, I'll go over our thoughts in detail of, of uh, whether we do the five, seven, or the 10, but um, it looks like the five-year deal, stacking all the payments early uh, will coincide with when we go for the big money with infrastructure bank, uh, when we do phase two, because we can do the first few years with no interest, uh, or just interest only. And then that first principal payment will kick in after, after uh, this is taken care of. And that's about a million dollars of, uh, of a debt service that would go away, that would be replaced by a 30 year uh, infrastructure bank loan uh, to do phase two. So um, just to give you a little idea, idea why we're, we're, we're uh, doing that refunding. So um, I think we're very fortunate to jump into something at 1%. We're, we're looking smart for doing that back in 2014. So. Mm -hmm. Pam and I'll take credit for that. <laughs> um, next, uh, you'll notice uh, you don't have financials yet because they're not <laughs> they're not quite complete. Um, I've been uh, stretched doing a lot of work, and as Sandy just mentioned, uh, I'm starting doing underwriting with TD Bank uh, on the new bond. That's going to take some time, but I, I should be done the financials uh, so probably sometime next week. Um, We've been working, it's, it's a little different this year. Uh, I've been working on, uh, with all staff members on our 2022 budget. Um, we have a draft that's being worked on right now. I'm doing the rate study analysis, um, but also doing scenarios with Providence involved, East Providence and without East Providence involved uh, for next year, for the next 10 years. So it's, it's, it's a complicated uh, kind of study uh, on, on uh, what that's going to entail if we do it ourselves or with them joining in. So um, I've got that model just about completely done. At the same time, we have the rate study group, who I believe, Pam Wright, are coming in in December. And I'm sending them my models to look at so they can incorporate that into uh, their plan. So uh, to say the least, uh, we're, we've been very busy um, the past few weeks and we will be right up through when we get uh, through the middle of December. Um, that, you know, my, th my thought, uh, I'm, I'm trying to trying to think how the best way to, uh, go in detail with the committee um, as far as uh, the, the nuts and bolts of, of how we came up with everything. And um, it's up to the committee if we, it would be nice to meet in person, uh, the three members of the committee, kind of like we did with the personnel committee. It makes it easier to be able to throw something up in the screen. Um, or I know when Joel Hellman was here as, as chairman, he would spend a lot of time in with me on one-on-one -on -one and go through the, the real detail of it and then get back to the committee that he did the, he did the research type of thing. So, I mean, I could have George come in if he wanted. Uh, we could work one-on-one, -on -one, go over everything before the committee meets uh, and try to get uh, so he, he could understand as chairman, uh, you know, everything that we've been working on because it's... it's uh, it's a bit complex, but that's up to the board how they want to do that. Mark, why not? Why not uh, after this meeting, talk to George, talk to the committee, the finance committee, and, and come up with the plan that you want to execute that the finance committee is satisfied with. Okay, that's George, does, does that make sense to you? Sounds good. I'll, I'll talk to Mark. You're tomorrow. frozen on my screen. Yeah, George, if you want to, even if, if, so if I'm off at the end. not working. Ellen? Ellen, I sent you an email to call in number. You might do better to call in on the phone. There's the call in phone number, okay. and you just have to plug in the, um, the meeting number and the password. That might work a little better. Pam, are you talking to me? 
Yes. I sent you an email, Alan. Can you hear me? What? Oh, yes, I can hear that. But my, my computer is, is uh, I'm using up my computer right now. Can you go to your email? Wait a second. Okay, one sec. Yeah, I'm trying to do that. It's not showing up yet. All right, well, let's just keep going if we can. Let's get the, we need the update and the search for executive director. Um, uh, I think- Excuse me, Alan, before we move on, Okay, you want me to you want me to call the number the New York number, or or call yeah. the uh, call the phone number. And then you plug in the meeting number when they ask for it and the password. And then, meanwhile, we missed Sue's report. I only have the. Uh, Well, we can go back and get that. Okay. Um, everyone else can. Sue, why that. don't you give the report? Okay, just just a little update uh, on the Walsh construction project. Um, they are working, uh, obviously, to finish up the project. Uh, I anticipate a good three more weeks uh, of work. The They've got la the last two sections. One is Hope Street in Bristol, and the other is in Northern uh, uh, Warren, Main Street and Union Street. Uh, both of those sections are cleaned and lined. They were videoed today, and uh, we should be putting chlorine in them by Friday. Uh, so that means next week we'll be getting back results, and that's Thanksgiving week. So then it will still take them a week or two to get all of the people transferred back to the water main. So we're finishing up. Uh, unfortunately, we're catching a little bit of cold weather right now tonight. People, um, there's a possibility of frozen pipes, um, but uh, hopefully it'll get warm in a couple of days for the, for the remainder of the time. Um, the contractor did have some issues with uh, COVID and some of their employees had to be out either because they were positive or just because someone on their crew was positive and then the whole crew <clears throat> needed to get tested. Uh, so that has slowed them up a little bit. They're they down, I believe, to two crews instead of three are normally working. So um, that being said, it is getting up, uh, within the next couple of weeks. I just want to comment that they did my street uh, last week. It's really something really. to see. It's really something really. that's quite an operation. And, and I can understand because I, I said to him, if you, lose, I to him, if you lose a couple of men, you're really in trouble. And he says, yeah, because yeah. those guys each have a set task, especially when they start pulling the, uh, the sprayer through the, right. well, the and concrete. They, it has to come. It can't stop in one spot. And it's really something to see. Uh, and this particular contractor, they have specialized crews. So one crew does the cleaning and lining work, whereas other men are uh, concentrate on putting out the bypass and connecting the houses. So those two crews don't um, interchange uh, right. very easily. So, so they've been making do, they've been uh, working as fast as they can. And obviously they also would like to finish the project. So- you Got to watch the camera go through the line and see how clean my- it's, what is going to be? It's beautiful. It, it's a, it is a very fun. It's interesting process to to, to watch them doing the lining. So, um, uh, that being said, we should not uh, go over the total budget. Uh, I will probably have a task order amendment uh, for the next board meeting, uh, just to approve additional funds for the uh, inspection. Uh, but it was only because we underestimated the the days, uh, the total time it would take, and. We will have enough in the contingency. I'm pretty confident to um, uh, take up that uh, over overage that we'll need for inspection. 
And uh, uh, Sue's also working with PAR on uh, expansion of the high pressure zone. We're, um, we have that on our agenda to approve a, a task order for the design. Um, we're looking to do some additional water main work on Medicom next year. So that by the time our pump station is done, we'll be able to have the new pipes in service and uh, significantly expand our um, higher pressure zone in the northern Bristol area. Uh, Sue put together a map for you. So you can see about uh, how that's going to be affected, some of the streets in the areas. Uh, or essentially what we're looking the most bang for the buck. We're, um, we did some work in previous years to be able to tie in some of the streets. And now by just doing uh, section, two sections on Medicom, we're gonna be able to tie in approximately a thousand customers. So it, uh, it'll be our uh, next phase that hopefully we can put into service by the end of next year. And just to yeah. clarify, those, those red lines that you see on the map, in those areas, we will have two water mains. We will have a low service and a high service uh, water main uh, in order to keep both pressure zones uh, flowing and uh, having good fire protection. And that was another reason we were working with PAR on hydraulic modeling to determine uh, what's the best situation for maintaining fire flows throughout the system and what side streets we might need to interconnect to be able to maintain water quality and fire flow. So that analysis uh, is That's being completed, so we should know fairly soon what the final design will be. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, I can, I hear, I'm hearing things, but right now I'm excluded from the meeting. Uh, I'm, waiting to come back into the meeting so I can see everybody. So will, will there still be some dead ends throughout this north end or throughout the system? Uh, so um, do you mean uh, in the low pressure areas or or in any, there will be some dead end areas, yes, but that is what we're working with PAR uh, on the modeling right now is to try to keep as much flow as we can and certainly redundancy for fire protection. Uh, even if the water doesn't necessarily flow, at least we would have water coming in two directions uh, in case there is a fire or, or a break. So yeah, we're trying to to re, uh, keep the dead ends to a minimum, but uh, uh, there will be some. Everybody's moving, like the squares are all moving now. <laughs> I get a big echo, Pam, because I hear everybody coming through my speaker as well as the phone. Yeah, you can only do one, one form of connection. It doesn't look like that's going to be able to speak. Alan, mute your question. Where's go. Randy? <laughs> <laughs> That's better, Alan. I put uh, his video in the waiting room, so it's not connected. Uh, so, Alan, I'm afraid you'll just be on phone. Okay. Then let Bill take the meeting over so he can see everybody. Sounds good. Any other any other questions for Sue or uh, any other reports we have here from Mike and uh, Randy? Okay. Um, item number I seven. I think, by the way, we go to number eight because uh, we're going to talk about uh, seven in executive session. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. Is everybody through? Anybody have any questions for me? Great. No. Pam. Actually, um, seven was just to say in general how we were proceeding with the um, selection of the executive director, that um, we're having uh, second interviews uh, tomorrow afternoon in executive session, and uh, just so that the board is proceeding, 
with their due diligence and um, we'll be meeting again tomorrow. So it was just to provide an update to uh, for the board reports that go to the uh, town councils so they understand where we are and what we're doing in the process. That at 4.15 again, Pam? It is. And that will be on Zoom. Will the personnel committee be uh, in person, Pam? Um, we didn't think it would, would, uh, would work as well. I think it might be better just to have everyone on Zoom. If the personnel committee wishes to, we could try it again, but it didn't work as well as we had hoped last time. I don't see why it can't just be a regular meeting. I mean, a special meeting for the whole board. Oh, well, it will be. Everyone on Zoom. Yeah, so we don't yep. have to. Right. Okay. Yeah, everyone will be on Zoom. Okay. Uh, number eight, task order for 2021 water main improvements, high pressure zone expansion. Uh, we have the memo here, Pam. Yes, yes. and uh, as we mentioned a little earlier, uh, we're looking to move forward with the design for the expansion of the high pressure zone by installing uh, a couple of mains on a couple sections of Medicom Avenue and uh, a couple of side streets. We have a proposal from PAR. Uh, the proposal you received actually uh, has been modified. We determined that we would not need the subservice investigations because of the amount of Work that's already been done in Medicom, we already have an existing main. There's a lot of utilities there. So we would have to do a survey, but actual, um, some of the subsurface investigations should not be necessary. So those have been eliminated from the proposal. So we're looking for an approval in the amount of uh, $75,000 to uh, perform the design work. And everything else would be in accordance to the, the uh, task order submitted by PAR. So moved. I'll second that. Any other discussion or questions? All those in favor. Uh, I read out your name. Bob? Yes. Chris? Chris? John? Hi. George? Hi. Uh, Gina? Yes. Tom? Yes. Alan? Yes. Okay. Passes. Thank you. Uh, number nine, quarterly write-offs for information only. Uh, yeah. I think if we look at the net write-offs to revenue, it's 0.05%, which is... Pretty small. <laughs> very small. Very small. Uh, Bristol continues to lead the way, but that's due to who they are and where they are and who's living there, who goes to school there. Okay, uh, item number 10, executive session. Uh, Hope Street Tank site pursuant to RIGL 42-46-5A2. Item number two, discussion related to job performance and character of executive director candidates pursuant to RIGL 42-46-5A1. And number three, investment of public funds related to executive director position pursuant to RIGL 42-46-5A7. Uh, before you vote, I just wanna make clear for the record that the persons to be discussed in executive session have been notified of their right to have the discussion occur in open session and both have declined. Very good. And one, one last thing, when we come out of executive session, there is an item for Hope Street tag site, but there will be no vote on that. Um, although the board will come out of executive session to seal the minutes, there will be no vote on that last remaining agenda item. Okay. Just oh, discussion. No okay. Need a motion to uh, move to executive session? So moved. So moved. 
Second. Second. Bob. Aye. Chris. Aye. John. Aye. George. Gina. Yes. Alan. Yes. Bill, myself, I. It's unanimous. Um, when we we're at the end of executive session, we'll come out into open session. Item number eleven, where there'll be discussion, but no vote taken. We need to. Pam, discuss- do you de- how much time do you need to set the meeting to exclude those uh, unnecessary? Uh, I'll I'll be leading. I'll just. <laughs> Okay. Just be a few minutes. Good night, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you. I'll be leaving as well, Pam. Okay. We just need uh, Mike for the first one. Uh, I need a motion to see Lou Millis of executive session. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Gina? Yes. Bill, yes. Bob? Yes. yes. John? Yes. Chris? Yes. George? Tom? Yes. Alan? Yes. Okay. Uh, item 11 is the Hope Street tank site. I think which we've, we've covered that or no? Yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing to vote on. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Raise your hands. Aye. 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 Okay. We'll see, see you, you tomorrow. At the, we'll at a different time. <laughs> Same topic. <laughs> 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 you like deja vu all over again. <laughs> Good night, all. Good night, all.